Hey guys, it's Marco again. Today with a new Arcane Mage Guide for patch 9.1. There hasn't been any changes playstyle wise and as previously stated in my Frost Mage video, I will try to keep this guy short and I'll have a link to my 9.0.5 Kyrian and Ventir Arcane Guides in the description. So check them out. Having those guides is the only reason why I won't talk about the Ordinary Talents and DPS Rotation, since I will be just demonstrating the same thing. Thank you for your understanding, and let's get started. This video is going to talk about Ventir and Kirian Arcane Mages, since those two are currently the best two Arcane Mage options with a different playstyle. I'm surprised that they're simming the same DPS on solo targets, while Kyrians have a small edge due to better AoE. So if you're already Ventir and playing Frost, you don't have to be afraid to respect Arcane and stay Ventir. First topic are Conduits and Soulbinds. Best Soulbind for Kyrian Mages is definitely going to be Pelagos for solo targets and two targets with Magi's Brand, Ire of Descended and Arcane Prodigy Conduit. While for three targets and more, Clea is going to have a small, tiny edge above Pelagos with Magi's Brand, Ire of Descendant and her Soulbind ability Courage. I just had to mention Clea a little, but you can play Pelagos the whole time, it should be a bit more fun due to smaller Arcane power cooldown. For Ventir, Arcane Mages have the best option in Teotar, his Shade Mastery buff is just too huge and he's going to be our best conduit for all types of content. Which is pretty good, considering that Nadja is going to be better for Frost Mages. So you won't have to deal with Conduit Energy. Stats. These are a bit less straightforward than with Frost Mages. Again, you usually want to go with the highest item level item, since Intellect is OP. But other than that, my Arcane Mage prefers Critical the most, then Mastery, and you really want to have a low amount of haste and versatility for solo targets. Mastery is just better version of versatility, so it's always going to be better than versatility until we hit that diminishing returns point, which are implemented in this expansion. Haste isn't too hot, since haste makes you burn mana a lot faster, which isn't fun. But for Kyrians, you do need to have certain amount of haste, I recommend to hit certain haste breakpoints, and for me, that's 10% haste. But let's not go too much into details. Just know that there is a super good weak aura to track this, and I talked a bit more about it in the previous video. For Venture Mages, haste is even less important, but I still like to have several percentages of haste. When it comes to Mythic Plus, I prefer to increase the amount of my haste, since mana isn't an issue in Mythic Plus, we're mostly spamming Arcane Explosion and regening mana back with Arcane Barrage. But always remember that you can scratch all my opinions if you sim your character and you get different results. That's why you should always sim your characters, and they actually have working simulations for Kyrian Arcane Mages now. So you don't need to make your own decisions. Whenever I get a new part of gear, I immediately test it out with Raid Bots. I will test the item in combination with all other items on different fight settings. For the raid, it's enough to do patchwork 5 minute fight on one target, if you don't want to min max a lot, and when you're asked in your guild what's your DPS upgrade of an item, you should be looking at this metric. And for mythic plus situations, I won't have a decent solo target damage paired with excellent AoE. It will also depend on a week to week basis. And for this, I will sim myself again on Patchwork Fight for about 30 seconds to 1 minute, for 2 to 6 targets depending on the dungeon and its level, plus I will check multiple scenarios. Also, I kinda like to simulate longer fights with my Arcane Mage, but that's just me. I strongly advise that you open raid bots and have a bit of fun yourself. And Kyrian Mages are usually going to have easier time in Mythic Plus since they're always running Arcane Harmony. And Arcane Harmony in Legendary is good for solo targets and AoE. While Ventir Arcane Mages are usually running Arcane Bombardment, which gives a huge damage output on AoE, but it kinda lacks in solo target damage. Moving on to Domination Sockets. 
If you've watched my Frost Mage Guide for 9.1, you can skip this topic because it's the same as in the previous video. Domination sockets are a new addition to the game and will have 5 domination sockets from gear which drops only in the raid. These gems are somewhat of set items and if you put all 3 sockets of the same type in, you will get a set bonus. You shouldn't worry too much about these, the situation is very simple. We will be running 3 DPS sockets, so 1 unholy DPS, 1 blood and 1 frost DPS socket. With 2 finesse sockets of the same type, depending on which set bonus is going to be the best. Also on the last note, we can get the sockets on helm, chest, shoulders, bracers and belt. So you want to make arcane harmony on your gloves and not your shoulders. So rip soul ash. One more thing to note is that these gems don't work in dungeons, while they will only work in the Maw and uh, the new raid. So they're gonna be OP for the new raid, but for dungeons you can go with your normal items. Also now we're gonna have some problems when it comes to picking your weekly chest reward. You kinda want to avoid helm, chest, shoulders, bracers and belts if you're going to focus on the raid. So yeah, that's, that's kind of going to be sucky if you get a decent upgrade, for example, on chest and you're going to get uh, a domination socket to chest from Sylvanas or something. Trinkets. Ideal trinkets for Kyrians were Soul Letting Ruby, a Dungeon Trinket and Campbell's Hymnal a Raid Trinket. We'll probably have to ditch both of them, since Arcane Prodigy is going to screw the timing of Ruby with Arcane Power. But I think that Ruby is still going to be decent, but not as oppressive as it was for Kyrians. While with Twentyr and other Covenants we had a wide range of trinkets and the ones which were good are gonna remain good. And those were Unbound Changeling, Imperial Ordinance and maybe in some cases Ruby and Quantum Device. The trinkets which will be good for Ventyr will also be good for Kyrians now. But man, if you thought that this isn't enough options for trinkets for arcane mages, wait to see the raiding trinkets. I believe that they are a pure hit for arcane mages, so we might see a lot of usage of both raiding trinkets. Tome of Monsters Constructions is a trinket that drops from the first boss. Damage wise, it is losing to its contender, Ebon Soul Wise. Which is really good, but I think we'll have better trinkets than wise, but maybe I'm wrong about this one. Titanic Ocular Gland is an absolute poggers trinket in my eyes, but boy we need to be above 50% HP always. If we can be above 50% HP for majority of the time, it's going to be a huge trinket. Shadowed Orb of Torment is better for Arcane than for Frost, but still, I think it offers too low amount of mastery. Any regular stats trinket is better than this in my book, and you also need to channel it for 2 seconds and get damaged while channeling. Lastly, we got Forbidden Necromantic Tome, a drop from Keltozad, which is going to have a bigger item level than the rest of the items, and I believe that this trinket is really going to be super good for Arcane Mages. But sometimes you're going to be unlucky with it and you won't have a high value of critical strike chance during your burst. But that's more of a misfortune than anything. And that's it for this short guide update video. If you have any suggestions or if you didn't like the video, let me know in the comments. I will do a proper guide for fire mages and I'm planning a few more videos where I just talk about certain things. I hope that you will leave a like on this video and that you will check out my Twitch and Patreon page. And as always, until next time, take care.